Up to this point, we've described the concepts of energy balance in terms of energy intake and energy expenditure. And I've described to you that obesity is a major public health crisis within the United States and within most developing countries. Now we've talked about energy expenditure and energy intake as a static quantity, and that makes it easier to understand. But is that really true? It turns out, no, it's not. Our energy expenditure and our energy intake change as we gain and lose weight. In this unit, we'll talk about some of that, what we know about it, and how it affects clinically meaningful weight loss. We're gonna describe how energy intake and energy expenditure change in relation to body weight. We'll describe what we know now about how people vary in adaptive thermogenesis. And then finally, we'll apply this knowledge to explain why long-term weight loss is so difficult for so many people. As we've described, if your energy intake exceeds your energy expenditure, you're in a position of positive energy balance and over time will gain weight. Similarly, if your energy expenditure exceeds your energy intake, you'll be in negative energy balance and therefore over time will lose weight. But what happens to these quantities with weight loss? Maybe you've changed your diet or maybe you've picked up some sort of exercise program, but you've been able to lose some weight. How do these quantities vary? Shown here is a study where they looked specifically at energy expenditure under conditions where they controlled energy intake. In this study, they brought in a series of participants and were overfed to either gain or underfed to lose 10% of their body weight. Their energy expenditure was then measured. As you can see on the graph on the right, in the participants that increased their energy intake and therefore gained weight, their energy expenditure increased by almost 500 kilocalories per day. This is a huge amount. This is almost a 25% increase in energy expenditure. Similarly, people who lost weight, their energy expenditure decreased, this time about 300 kilocalories per day. These are thought to be normal physiological processes. As you overconsume food, your energy expenditure increases to try to revert you back to your original body weight. Similarly, if you underconsume calories, your energy expenditure is trying to decrease to make sure you don't lose too much weight. This process, by which our energy expenditure is modified based on weight gain and weight loss is known as adaptive thermogenesis. As you lose weight, your energy expenditure will decrease, again, trying to restore you back to your normal initial condition. As you gain weight, your energy expenditure will now increase. That's to compensate for the increased calories to utilize them to maintain your normal body weight. So what do we know about this process? Well, some really interesting data is just emerging. We know that this is very long lasting. We know that it varies between individuals, although we don't know exactly how. We know that it's largely genetic. And we know that this could be predictive of your success in losing weight. I'm gonna go through a few of these new studies to talk to you about why we know these things. You may be familiar with the television show, The Biggest Loser. In this show, participants were brought in and underwent a weight loss program to lose weight. To study these participants, their energy expenditure was measured both at baseline, before the program, and at the end of their competition, which lasted about 30 weeks. They then brought those same participants back six years later to see what happened to their basal metabolic rate. Now, consistent with the data I showed you before, if you look at the 30-week time point, as participants lost weight, their energy expenditure decreased. This is adaptive thermogenesis, as we've described. However, what was surprising is when they brought these participants back six years later, they still had the same level or similar levels of adaptive thermogenesis. That suggests that these changes in basal metabolic rate are not transient. They don't just occur shortly after a change in body weight, but they're long-term and they're persistent. They can last years, maybe decades, after a change in body weight. A second intriguing piece of data is this study here. What they did in this study was they brought in participants, they measured their metabolic rate, both before and after a week of caloric restriction. That's plotted here on the x-axis. Now, as you can see, there's a very wide variance in how participants had changes in their adaptive thermogenesis after one week of caloric restriction. Some participants had very large changes in their thermogenesis, almost 300 calories per day reduced energy expenditure. Other participants had almost no change or even a slight increase in their energy expenditure. This highlights there's this very large variation among individuals in terms of their adaptive thermogenesis. Now, how does this relate to their ability to maintain the weight-reduced state? Well, they brought these nine participants back after six weeks to see how effective they were able to maintain their weight loss. Now, as you can see, the participants in the top left who had the most adaptive thermogenesis, their metabolic rate decreased the most, they had the least weight loss. It suggests that it was harder for them to maintain the weight-reduced state. 
In contrast, the people who had the least adaptive thermogenesis, the people whose energy expenditure stayed as similar as possible to before they lost weight, were able to maintain more weight loss. Again, this is a quite small study. It needs to be replicated in a much larger population. So why is this predictive? What's actually happening here? So try to think of two people, one person who has very high adaptive thermogenesis and one person who has very low adaptive thermogenesis. Now consider, these two people have both lost the same amount of weight. After they've lost weight, how do their caloric needs differ between the person with high adaptive thermogenesis and the person with low adaptive thermogenesis? Now the answer should be somebody with high adaptive thermogenesis, somebody whose metabolic rate decreased by quite a lot, their caloric needs are now gonna decrease by quite a lot as well. If they have a reduction in their energy expenditure by 500 calories per day, in order to maintain energy balance now, they also need to reduce their energy intake by 500 calories per day. In contrast, somebody who had very little adaptive thermogenesis, maybe only 20 calories per day, they only need to reduce their energy intake by 20 calories a day to maintain weight maintenance. Now let's take a step back. Is this helpful or harmful for long-term weight loss? Well, for somebody with very high adaptive thermogenesis, this is actually quite harmful because this is gonna make it more difficult for them to maintain the weight reduced state because as they lose weight, they're going to have to make very large adjustments in energy intake to maintain their weight loss. So that brings us to appetite. How does appetite change when we lose weight? Do you think it increases or do you think it decreases? Some data from this study suggests that appetite will increase as you lose weight. As you can see in these two graphs here, looking at both hunger and desire to eat, after people have lost weight, either 10 weeks after a weight loss program or a slightly over a year after a weight loss program, their residual hunger and the residual desire to eat is much higher than it was at baseline. This suggests that as people lose weight, their appetite is increasing. Again, you could think of this as a physiological adaptation to the weight reduced state, with your body striving to get back to its normal energy balance, or striving to get back to the weight it was before the intervention. This is largely thought to be driven by changes in our hunger hormones. Ghrelin is a hormone that makes us feel hungry. And as you can see in the graph on the left, ghrelin is higher after people have lost weight. Higher ghrelin would mean that you would feel more hungry. In the graph on the right, peptide YY, also known as PYY, is a hormone that causes satiety. What you can see on that graph is that PYY levels are lower a year after weight loss. Again, the combination of increased ghrelin and decreased PYY suggests that physiologically, these individuals are gonna feel hungrier and be less satiated after a meal. So together, there's two challenges with maintaining the weight reduced state. As you lose weight, your energy expenditure will decrease. Now again, that's gonna vary among individuals. As you lose weight, your appetite is now gonna increase, also in a way that is probably going to vary across individuals in ways that we don't really understand right now. But together, what that suggests is in order to maintain the weight reduced state, a person needs to reduce their energy intake to match the reduced energy expenditure. And that's gonna be difficult. They're gonna to have to fight against their increased feelings of hunger and decreased feelings of satiety. On the other hand, after you've achieved the weight reduced state, you could supplement your energy expenditure with additional exercise, which is going to increase your overall total daily energy expenditure. That will allow you to maintain energy balance at a slightly higher energy intake level. So in summary, both energy expenditure and energy intake are not fixed quantities. They change as our body weight changes. This is probably a physiological adaptation to maintain us at what our body thinks is the ideal weight. But this makes it very difficult to maintain long-term weight loss because both decreases in energy expenditure and increases in appetite are going to make it difficult to maintain the weight reduced state. We're just starting to learn more about how people vary in this important process. How do individuals vary based on their adaptive thermogenesis? And how does that relate to their success in weight loss? How do people vary in their hormonal responses to reduce weight in terms of appetite? Can this be leveraged in a way to improve success for people trying to lose weight?